Little Drops of Wonderful podcast. My name is Ali. I live in Kent in the UK with my husband and our two daughters who are 12 and 8. And this is my podcast to talk about all things crochet and knitting and yarny and crafty. All of the good stuff. How have you been? <laughs> oh, uh, you can find me on Instagram and on Ravelry as Starry Eyes Ali. And the notes for all of this um, that I'm going to be talking about are underneath this video along with um, the timestamps so that you can jump to any section that you wish. Um, yes, there's been a bit, a bit of a longer delay, <coughs> excuse me, um, than I intended. Um, partly because um, I realised that I had been rather neglecting some of my household responsibilities and I've been trying to uh, catch up on some tidying up and uh, just general ch chores that needed to be done. Uh, everyone's been sick. Um, if I sound like death and look like death, that's because I pretty much feel like death. Um, it's my turn. I haven't had much sleep. I woke up in the night realising that my throat was scratchy and that my uh, mucus production <laughs> has gone up. This is a really lovely start. Um, Lilia, my eldest daughter, she is at home today. She was also at home yesterday. If you've watched this podcast before, you'll notice that I'm in a different position. Um, I, just, I, I just fancy being in a different position. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, as I was saying, Lilia's at home today, she's currently upstairs having a uh, little sleep but she is very likely to come downstairs um, very soon and ask to go and put a film on or something in the front room or come in to demand food or drink, um, so apologies for any interruptions. This is going to be a little bit all over the place, I suspect, because I am not feeling, uh, I am feeling um, decidedly below par. I have a lot of notes, so I'm just going to refer to them. So what are we going to talk about today? Um, a rather hilarious um, project uh, from the past. I'm still trying to think of a new name for that section. I think I'm going to go with the working title of From Your which is a bit of a friend's reference. So uh, yes, my item from your is uh, is hilarious. So please do stick around for that. Before I have my cup of tea, I'm gonna have my morning ginger shot. Hannah of Hannah, the Hannah from Sheep's Alley podcast. Um, I will put a link to the video below. Um, once gave a recipe for a ginger shot. So it's basically just, it's basically just ginger. Uh, Hannah, when she demonstrates this on her podcast, it, I mean, it's like ginger is so good for you. It's supposed to help ward off too much colds, she says, really snotty. It's good for your joints. Um, and when she talks about this on her podcast, she says her husband thinks this is disgusting, but she doesn't think it's disgusting. And then she drinks it and she says, see, it's not disgusting. So every time I drink this, I always say, see, not disgusting, <laughs> but I hate it. It's so strong. So anyway, chin chin. Not disgusting. Okay, finished objects. How many do I have? Why am I singing? I wanted to do a little tag update on my hat actually. Let me just go and get my hat. Lilia's here. I just went through to the other room to get my hat and she was sitting on the sofa. She made me jump out of my skin. <laughs> do you want to say hello to the 5,000 viewers? Hello, 5, she, No, do you want to come and say hello? Oh, yes, even yes. though you're in your pyjamas. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> Lilia's not very well, bless her. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to get some breakfast. And then leave us alone. She's going to go and watch Charmed. Do you remember Charmed? Oh, She's Charmed. just got, we had a box set of Charmed, and she, you're really enjoying it, aren't you? It's really bad though, isn't it? <laughs> it's like 1990s acting. Yeah, but it gives me something to watch because everything else has ended. Yeah. Oh, you sound really bad. Yeah, I feel yeah. really bad as well. While she's faffing about in the kitchen, my uh, Tchaikovsky hat um, is. I was talking about putting a tag on it, and I went for um, the grey one in the end 
um, because someone in the comments had suggested that that was the highest contrast with the um, bubble. And I just like the idea. So let's put it on to demonstrate how it looks with the tag. This is really awkward because my fringe needs cutting. So at the moment, every time I wear hats, <laughs> I look like that. But there's the tag. Now, I just used um, some of... Uh, I just used some of the yarn that I used to knit the hat. Oh, I've got static hair now. Um, so someone in the comments actually asked about how I attached um, the tags, but I've never done it before. And they said that what they'd done previously is just tie it in a knot, which always comes unraveled. And that's exactly what I've done. And actually, yes, the knots are already coming unraveled. So I think what I might do is sew it on with actual thread, which is less likely to come unraveled once you knot it, that you can just see that I I didn't, I haven't committed to it, I've just literally tied it on, I haven't weaved in the end so that if it didn't work, and then when I put it on I just tuck those ends away. But I really like how it finishes off the hat and makes it look all profesh, really like that. So that's my hat. Right, my next finished object is my rose water shawl, and this is, so this is all on Ravelry, I can't remember what size hook that I used. Um, and it was a gift, the, um, oh it smells of, it smells of hot water bottle, which I'll explain why in a minute. Um, this pattern was a gift from my friend Lorraine, who is um, the real maid in England. Um, she bought the pattern for me and we agreed we would knit it together. So we've both been knitting this over the past few weeks. And I used River Knits uh, Starry Night, which is um, inspired by Vincent van Gogh painting Starry Night. It's beautiful. It looks beautiful on the skin. And when I saw this pattern, it was in my favourites, which is why Lorraine bought it for me. I knew that this was the yarn that I wanted to use. And I'm really pleased because it looks, it's perfect for the yarn because it really shows off that Starry Night. This is 100% BFL, which some people would say was not very soft, but I really like the feeling of it. Oh, that looks nice. It's okay. Oh, I'm glad you think it's only okay. It means you won't steal it like everything else. I've got my hat, so So, this is a pattern by Janina. Although I heard someone else the other day say her name differently. Um, so if I'm saying that wrong, I'm sorry. But it's Janina Callio. Uh, like I say, all the details are on Ravelry. It's a really great one scheme project. I had quite a bit of yarn left over actually, maybe 20, 25 grams. Are you going to shut the door? Okay, she shouldn't interrupt us for a little while. She's going to go and immerse herself in 1990s magical drama. Um, yes, so I absolutely love this. And the lace uh, section is, I've no idea if you can see this, <laughs> um, the lace section is, there it is, very easy to knit. You do not need, like you'd often need in a large lace section to use an abundance of stitch markers um, because it's a very repetitive um, uh, pattern. And actually, if you were a beginner and you wanted to have a little go at knitting lace, this pattern would be ideal. Um, I really, yes, I, 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 I'm not a beginner at knitting lace. I enjoy knitting lace. I've knit quite a bit of it. Um, but if I were a beginner, this would have really been a good starting point. So if you're thinking about trying to get into knitting lace, I would say that this pattern was excellent. So yes, that's the Rosewater shawl. The good thing about when you put, I've got a podcasting basket, and now that I've shown it on the podcast, it means I can start wearing it. Could have done with this as well. Right, so I've been making some bags. I've still got loads more to make, so I'm making them as gifts. And I was also like to give one away, but I just wanted to show you. I'm not going to show you in detail. This is going to be speed showing. I made a boxy pouch. It's not um, interface, so it's quite um, heavy. And I forgot to put the handle on it, and it's lined. I haven't sewn up the lining yet with stripy stuff. Really like that. They're quite. Um, um, time consuming to make these boxy, boxy pouches but they're really useful. I made um, a yoga bag, this is very similar to one I made for my sister for her 40th birthday, um, but then I've got to go back in, I haven't sewn up the lining yet thank goodness because look what I did, how terrible is that? <laughs> so I'm going to go back into that and sew that up. 
I made another yoga bag. This is for my husband's aunt. Um, she's actually a yoga teacher. Um, and it says a thank you uh, for the lunch that she bought us. And then I made two Christmas bags using some fabric that was sent to me a while ago by a lovely podcast viewer. And I've got more of this fabric left, thank goodness, because I want to make some more of these. They're both drawstring. I haven't put drawstrings in them yet. So one of them, they're both Christmassy. One of them's got mittens. I suppose that could be just wintry. And it's got my wool. This is like a wool suit fabric. I use that for the base. And then this one's a sparkly gingerbread men one. Absolutely love that one. And that is a tartan um, fabric that I want to use to make a skirt when one of my daughters was Katie Mulrag for World Book Day. Um, this one, I made a few like this with the yellow and the denim. This is actually some of my old jeans. Um, this one I'm keeping for me because I just, you know, I get attached to my jeans and I want to keep a little memento of it. And I just love that yellow fabric. But I made a few of these um, and I'm quite pleased with that. And it's lined with um, some yellow gingham. I actually went out and bought some fat quarters um, from Hobbycraft um, just because I wanted some stuff. I am going to have a massive stash, fabric stash clear out. Um, and then finally there's this one. And this is another little yoga bag. I'm really pleased with this one. There's no lining in this one, so it's quite floppy. Um, and it's just lined with blue. I need to put the drawstrings on. Um, and I think I'm going to use this possibly for a giveaway at the end of the podcast. But stay tuned for that because I'm making this up as a girl. Okay. we now project bags all over the floor. My final finished object is my hot water bottle cover. I had a miniature hot, not miniature, I had a small hot water bottle. Um, and um, I was, wasn't feeling very well after my flu jab. Couldn't warm up. It was really cold. My husband bought me the hot water bottle to help me warm up. And I thought, right, now's the time. I've been wanting to make a hot water bottle cover for ages for the Cozy Up for Winter Mouth that I am running with Becky of Bats of Blighty. The last day of the mouth is actually today. No, tomorrow. Today's the 31st of January and um, tomorrow's the 1st of February and that's the last day. So by the time this is uploaded, it'll probably be past the end of it. So the dates are irrelevant. You missed it. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have joined in, um, I've been making uh, things for the Cozy Up Winter Mouth. I've cozied up a, a jar candle, I've cozied up a rock, I've cozied up a bit of sea glass. What else have I cozied up? I can't remember now. Um, so my last, the thing I really, really wanted to make was a hot water bottle cover. And because I had a very small water bottle, I just made it up. And I have used cotton. I've used drops. Love you. It's a DK weight. And I think I used a two and a half millimetre hook. And I have made, so I made some granny squares. Uh, I hope the light's okay where I'm sitting because the, the, the light is right in front of me, but there's a mirror <laughs> that might be causing shadow, so I apologise for that. So yes, yeah, so I've used three different colours. I've made some granny squares and then I've just um, grannied off the top of it to create the top and the bottom. And at the back I grannied a kind of flap and sewed on some random buttons that don't really match but those are the buttons I had so those are the buttons that got used. I like to use wooden ones but I didn't have enough. Um, and I've just made a flap so that can then be undone and you can take your hot water bottle out and it's all cotton and I know that generally you would make a hot water bottle in wool because that would hold the heat more um, but I <laughs> I have strange issues about bedding um, I'm not going to go into them, um, but I have a phobia of things that go bobbly. I don't mind it so much if I'm wearing it. So like if I had a jumper or a pair of socks that went bobbly with like wool, um, and I, I could just glean that and it doesn't bother me in the same way. But anything to do with my bed, sheets, anything has to be smooth as smooth can be. And I figured that cotton was going to be a much less, much smoother and less likely to bobble than wool because I am a freak. Don't get me started on novels because I actually don't like talking about it. It freaks me out. <laughs> Let's move on. That's a very good um, segue into the cozy up for winter now. So as I said, it finishes tomorrow. So it will have ended by the time you watch this. Um, I want, I did want to film this earlier, but like I say, um, oh, I've got no battery now. 
plug my battery in in a minute, but remember to start recording again. Um, it finishes tomorrow, um, and I haven't been able to film any earlier just because of work and the kids being sick and me being sick and Dan being sick. And there was a time um, a couple of weeks ago when Lilia um, got sick at a separate time and she threw up all over the stairs, like literally all over the stairs and the stairs go round in a spiral and it went through the banisters and down to the next set of stairs as well. It was horrendous. Anyway, um, I wanted to talk about prizes because I I don't think I mentioned them last time. Um, the FO thread, so I am ho I'm hosting the Chatter and FO thread for crocheted cosy up items and Becky of the Back to Variety podcast is hosting the knitting chatter and FO thread for knitted cosy up items and we both have prizes I haven't really got my act together with prizes with this just I'm, yes I've just been really disorganized I'm very sorry about that sorry Becky who's been much better than me and much more organized and thank you for everyone that's been joining in um, I've been looking at all the pictures and the FO thread I need to have a proper look through later a cup of tea and a little look through um, and I wanted to just, anyway, show you some of the prizes. So the first um, thing I've got is um, I'm gonna make a dodgy bag, which doesn't exist yet. So that will be one of the prizes. And, okay. Uh, I have a bag from Lily of Nordic Stitches. She, this is now a little bit out of uh, season, but um, it won't be in a few months time. She made me one of these and she included uh, an extra one as a giveaway. She used a really sturdy uh, lining, which she says she doesn't like, but to me it's brilliant because it makes it like a bucket. It's a Merry Christmas bag. Absolutely lovely and it's lined with this really nice star pattern and she's got her Nordic Stitches label in there. So that is one of the prizes. Thank you so much Lily for that. That was really nice of you. Making bags takes ages, so I really appreciate that. Um, it takes me forever. Like I can cut maybe four bags out in a day, but it takes me like hours to sew just one together. And then I've got this really lovely bag from Sharon. Lovely, lovely Sharon um, of Sharon's Crafty Creations. How cute is that? I have one of Sharon's bags as well. Thank goodness, because otherwise I might have just snaffled that one. Um, yeah, so thank you Sharon for that, that's really nice. And then I have another bag, and this is from Jilly, lovely Jilly at Mrs S Creations. Um, she sent me two, um, one that I kept, which was like a plain red one, and one with this gorgeous Scotty dog pattern on it. Oh, and it's, I mean, her bags are beautifully made. And look at the little tag on the zip pull. Um, because when she sent it to me, this was way like back in the autumn, so, and it was near to Halloween, so there's a little zombie stitch marker there as well. And that's her details, Mrs S Creations. Um, and that's Jilly. So thank you so much, Jilly, for that. I'm keeping that all nice in the cellophane. So that's three bags plus, you know, the booby prize, one of my dodgy bags uh, that doesn't, like I say, doesn't exist yet. And then I've got some yarn and a stitch marker. So the, this yarn was sent to me quite some time ago. And I said uh, uh, from Felicity, and she was Pebble Beach Yarns, but she has changed her name because she's moved house. So she is now the Iron Bridge Yarn Studio. She is now the um, Iron Bridge Yarn Studio and she has sent me a new label to put on the yarn. So I'm gonna show you the yarn and then I'm going to show you her new label. So I'm not gonna show you the old label. So this is it's the Tiggy Winkle colorway. It's 80% superwash merino, 10% nylon, and 10% cashmere, so it's a bit luxurious and it's beautiful. And that is Mrs. Sorry, not Tiggy Winkle, Mrs. Tiggy Winkle, of course. It's coming up, I think, because of the light, or oh, possibly when I edit this, it will look fine. It's it's coming out a little deeper than it is in real life, but just as beautiful. So that's the colourway, and this is her new branding, the Iron Bridge Yarn Studio. Very, very nice, very classy branding that. And this is the label that she sent me. I'm gonna pop that on a bit later. Just get my tape out and do that. So that is the yarn price. There, so, 
a lovely bunch of prizes. I have also got um, a pattern to give away. Um, not give away. I've also got a pattern as one of the prizes. And that is the Your Favourite Brew, Brew Shawl, which is pattern from lovely Jen Sheelan. Uh, I'm going to put a picture up of it somewhere. Um, to show you what it looks like uh, and that is going to be included as one of the prizes as well. Um, I do apologise that I have been quite so absent from this um, mail on the chatter thread. It is purely because January has been uh, a very busy time of reflection and just trying to catch up on things. I'm feeling extraordinarily overwhelmed at the moment. There is a lot of stuff that we are doing around the house uh, that desperately needs doing um, and there is stuff that I want to do like there were bags, I know it sounds ridiculous, but there were people I would like to make bags for as I feel like that's what I want to do. And it takes me so long and I won't rest until it's done, but it is making me feel quite overwhelmed. So where was I? Yes, I apologise for my absence. I think I've just been reflecting on other things and, and, and looking at, at the way I have lost touch with certain things like I used to... Um, be more in tune with the seasons and nature and I feel I've lost that over the past few years and I've been looking um, at ways to redress that which I'll talk a bit about later. Anyway so that's the cosy up for winter mail. There will be more on that maybe next week or the week after. All I will say is watch this space. Works in progress. Okay, my first work in progress to share with you today is the Nail Year Wrap. This is a pattern by Shara Maid. I don't know if this pattern that I printed will do it much justice. It's designed for the minis that you get in an advent, a yarn advent. I don't have to refer to the pattern anymore, but I like to have it to hand just in case. So last time I showed this to you, um, I think I, I hadn't got very far, but I've been working on it quite a bit. So this is where I am. So I'm using minis from my advent calendar that was a gift from the ladies at Alison Yola at Little French Meadow, which I absolutely loved. And each mini is 10 grams, which gets me seven rows of each colour, which is then interspersed with a neutral. I love this. It's going to be a long scarf and I took a few of the darker colours out because I just didn't think it was sitting right. So if when I get to the end of my 20, I think about 20 uh, minis, if I feel that it's not long enough, I will add some more of my Little French Minis, uh, Little French Meadow Minis that I have in my collection. How amazing is that? It's a very easy to remember pattern. Once you, I did make a mistake way down here and I realised what I was doing, and then once I got what was wrong, what, what I was doing wrong, I, I managed to get my head around how to do it right. Um, yeah, absolutely loving this. And can you see all those ends? I know that you might be thinking, oh my goodness, look at those ends, that's terrible. But I am like, I've been watching Marie Kondo. Have you seen Marie Kondo on Netflix? And when she sees mess, she gets really excited because she's like, she loves mess because she loves sorting it out. And I am very much like that with ends. I see ends and I'm like, <gasps> I want to weave them in, I love it. I like weaving in, especially if I'm not feeling very well. Um, a little sit down and um, a glass of wine and a weave in of ends is just the thing. And that's all living in my lovely, lovely Christmas bag. Very out of season, which was a gift from my uh, lovely friend Suzanne, who's inside number 22. Last time I um, moved her next door to inside number 23, which is a different person altogether. <laughs> she is inside number 22 underscore. Um, and she is a lovely lady, originally from Denmark. And she gifted me this lovely bag, which she made herself. And I have... Um, I Love Santa pin, which was a gift from my friend Lou on a Christmas card that she sent me. And because it is an advent wrap, it's in my Christmas bag, because Christmas can be in your heart all year round. Uh, so that is my first work in progress. My next work in progress, I haven't made much progress on, other than casting on a second sock. I'm in a bit of a mess. This is all living in my gorgeous bag from Michelle of Pictures in Thread. She sent me this as a very, very kind gift. Thank you, Michelle. 
um, it's got the stone man on and I sorry about the shadow there I really love Raymond Briggs um, illustrations and this little bag is lovely it's sort of wintery without being too Christmas tree oh, and it's got these little Christmassy fir trees on the inside and in here is my self merging socks I dyed some yarn during vlogmas um, to be uh, kind of self striping but the way I dyed it quite accidentally um, came out more self merging than self striping and now it's all self tangling um, so this is my first sock I'm just in the progress of doing the heel I'm attempting to do an eye of partridge heel I'm not sure if I'm succeeding I did quite a deep cuff and this is how my self merging socks are looking that's sock one it's quite a short um, leg because that's how I prefer it and this is as far as I've got with the second sock I bought DPNs on eBay because I wanted to knit them concurrently these are the these are the DPNs I'm using for my first sock and these are the DPNs I'm using for the second one <laughs> they're quite substantially longer and I can't work out if I prefer that or not um, if it feels more cumbersome or if it feels safer like things aren't going to drop off the end the jury is out on whether I prefer the longer DPNs or the shorter DPNs um, I'll let you know I'll let you know at the end but I haven't made much progress on that because I was going to work on these in um, the car when we went up to my sister's in Birmingham which is a quite a long drive but in the end I took my um, uh, I actually took my advent wrap not the not the Nalia wrap, but some the other one I'm about to talk about. Um, yeah, so not much progress there, um, but I absolutely love them. I'm really pleased with that self merging yarn, and um, yeah, really excited to see how they end up. My next work in progress is living in this amazing bag. You see, when I look at bags like this, I think, why do I bother? Because my bags are shocking. shocking this bag's amazing this bag was made for me by our minty she is a viewer of this podcast she lives in canada and i think i'd said she made she was making some bags and i said oh i love that fabric it's lovely it's got all kind of like um uh, owls on it my girls love this fabric they think it, it well it reminds them of hogwarts and they love animals and owls and they just love it it's kind of beautiful and it's all got this lovely yellow which i love Got a little tag, all these little details. There's a tag at this end as well. And a beautiful matching handle. The zips are all enclosed at the ends in matching fabric. The zip is done beautifully. It's all top stitched along there. It's got this wonderful little Canada tag that she made. As well. I mean, the detail of it. I mean. I, I attempt to do detail and then forget, so I'll make like a little tag to on the side and then two days later find it under the iron. It's like, it's just beautiful. And it's big as well, this bag. And it's lined with maple leaf fabric. Oh, it's just brilliant. She sent me this, I talked about this, I think, on the last podcast. So, in here is a project that I haven't done much on, but I am so enjoying. Oh, look. So at the bottom of this bag, I've still got my, I like to keep, if someone sends me a bag, I like to keep in it the card that they send to me with it. So I, so I can look at it every time I use that project bag in future. So I've got my, how's it going, eh? Uh, card. And she also sent me, oh, I might have to have one of these, loads of these little maple syrup sweets. I'm going to keep one of those out. And then this is a, a part of a gift that was from uh, Lily. It's a lanolin rich a uh, hand balm um, and I've popped that in as well just because you never know when you're going to need that oh, just love it it's just so beautiful thank you Arminty and it's fitting all of this yarn in this massive amount of yarn so I talked about this briefly last time I am making the Falling Ivy Shawl uh, by Hannah Siegmund who is otherwise known as the Cozy Cottage Crochet lovely lovely Hannah I love her podcast I've only got this far <laughs> And my gauge is off, so my gauge, I'm, my, this is going to be bigger than it should be. So I hope I have enough yarn. I've done this. <laughs> it's very long. <laughs> it's a crescent shawl, um, or sort of scarf. Mm. Um, it's very, very long. It's at least my wing, wingspan. 
if I were an owl. Um, and I have used, to do this bit, an entire one of these balls. So, and I've got another four of these and then the contrast colour I've got three of. So I just have to hope that I'm not going to end up having to order, break my rules and order more yarn before Fiverr East. Uh, but if I do, I do. <laughs> it's a hardship I am prepared to live with. Um, and this is Drops Cotton Merino. I've never used it before and I chose it because I wanted to do a kind of uh, two-tone grey version of this shawl. And this has got a kind, because it's a mix of cotton and merino, it's got a kind of heathered um, look to it. And the dark, this is the dark one. This is the colour I'm mixing it with. And I just really liked that. It is a joy to work with. It's soft and it's cool. Um, and it's... I, I, I am loving working with this yarn. It is a DK weight. I'm using the hook that's recommended in the pattern, even though it's giving me a bigger gauge, um, which is a 5.5 millimetre hook. That is my very boring hook. I need to upgrade my 5.5 millimetre hook um, to a slightly nicer one to hold. I might have one, but I couldn't be bothered looking. Um, yeah, so I'm loving it so far. It's a very easy crochet so far it's a very therapeutic crochet it's enjoyable um, you don't have to at the moment anyway I am not having to engage my brain in much thought I can just do this whilst watching the telly and yeah so far I am loving the yarn I am loving the pattern I am loving the project bag and I think I'm going to love that sweet when I eat it as well so all in all so far, very successful work in progress. My final work in progress is actually, I don't know where I went all posh. <laughs> My final work in progress. I would now like to address you about my final work in progress. <laughs> right, stop talking like the queen. <laughs> um, it's not a work in progress. It is a work in progress finished object hibernating thing. No, it's not a finished object. I've decided this is not finished. It could be finished, but it's not. This is my advent shawl. I started this advent shawl last year using minis for my advent swap with Lily of Nordic Stitches. I then added into it um, a couple of little French meadow minis from like the Christmas mini scheme club and some minis that I did uh, got from a swap with my friend Sarah, who is Sarah One Daisy. It's still telling me it's low in battery, I have to plug it in in a minute. And then uh, I put it to one side and I added minis again this year from Lily. And um, we did another swap and Sarah, who I also did another swap with. Um, and if I don't put the, the December minis from Little French Meadow into my Narnia wrap, it will go into here. But it's still not big enough. It's a triangle shawl. Um, it is big. It, it is big. This is a, the, the pattern I'm using is actually a pattern for bulky weight yarn, and it's patterned by um, Anna Boo's house. It's free on her blog, um, and you can see it's huge. It is huge, like that. But what I want it to be is like a blanket shawl, a triangle blanket shawl. So maybe big enough to go around both me and the girls, or me and hubby. Um, so I'm going to keep going with it. I'm going to call this a hibernating project. Uh, oh, I really like it. It's funny when you look at it on the screen and you think, I'm going to turn around to show you the back. I can't now see if you can actually see the back. <laughs> I feel like a superhero. Um, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so I'm not calling it finished yet, partly because I want it to be massive and partly because I love it. I just love working on this. It, uh, I'm associating this with Christmas now. And I think when, when I do call this finished, I think I might just have to do the same project again with any future swaps that I do. Um, yeah, so I'm absolutely love that. And it is now going um, into hibernation. It's living in my, and it goes into hibernation with my hook, which is my 3.25 millimeter hook, which means I probably need to buy another one. I'll just remember where that one is. I should probably put a little post-it note in there to remind me what hook size I'm using. Right, and it's living in my really dodgy bag that I made. I found this patchwork panel that I'd obviously done years ago 
And rather than just get rid of it, I turned it into a dodgy bag with loads of scraps. But it really, it really, really is dodgy. But it's perfect for this project and it kind of makes me smile. Right, I'm going to go and get my phone charger. But I'm not going to make the same mistake I made last time. I'm going to turn it on, plug my phone in and then start recording. Right, I really hope the light and everything's okay because I can't really see as well as I normally can. So, I have moved, normally there's a lot of mess here. There's still a bit of mess there, but I've moved it all onto the floor. So it literally is just mess on the floor so that you can't see it. And that's just my little shelves that I got on eBay and painted with chalk paint. There's all kinds of just little bits. You don't want to know that. Right, moving on. I promised you a very, very funny um, from your, And I think for you to really appreciate it in its full effect, I'm gonna have to put it on. make it in my defense I didn't make it for me I made it for my husband I made it in a this is all on Ravelry any other information that you might need to know the pattern is from the book The Happy Hooker by I want to say Jan Eaton but I might be wrong anyway I'll put it all down below all on the screen um I made it for my husband before I had any uh respect for gauge <laughs> It's all made in Aran weight acrylic yarn from Hobbycraft. It's got a skull and crossbones on it. The picture in the book looks really cool. This looks really daft. It's actually really warm and cosy. Anyway, he, we would marry condoing our wardrobe and we were getting rid of the things that didn't spark joy and rude, <laughs> rude. He decided that he wanted to get rid of this and i see his point he's never worn it and it's hideous <laughs> um but it did make me laugh because i thought oh, i'm gonna have to show them that on my podcast uh yeah skull and crossbones jumper not more much more to say about this other than you know i did a blooming good job of it um it's just massive and a bit rubbish however i could have done with this last night because i was freezing it was really cold so maybe i'll keep it for wearing about how I'm really hot. <sighs> Low battery, but you're plugged in. Oh, I was getting really hot there, and then my phone, I realised my phone wasn't actually properly plugged in. Yeah, and I didn't say, but that's a in case you haven't guessed. That was a crochet jumper from the Hacky ha, 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 Happy Hooker book. Uh, so that is my thing from your. Um, next thing, incoming things. Okay, so where's me for? Oh my goodness, I'm in a bit of a mess. To be honest. Right, I'm gonna try and race through this, otherwise it's gonna take me forever. Incoming things that I didn't share last time. I did a swap with my friend Sarah, who is Sarah One Daisy. Hello, Sarah. Happy belated birthday to you. Uh, we both swapped a project bag and some minis and did a 12 days Christmas swap. So we started on Christmas Day and we opened it until 6th January and then we did a lucky 13th with a few bits and bobs in. There's some bits that aren't in here. Obviously the yarn is now in my shawl and she also included a very useful little pot of um, darning needles, which are in my other project bag. Or are they here? Did I bring it in? I did bring another bag. Oh, here it is. Um, yeah. Um, little pot of darning needles, which has like, been the most useful thing I've had this year so far. Um, and she made this amazing bag. Look, it's so adorable. It's got alpacas on, or llamas, and cactus. I do love a cactus. And cactus flowers, and it's got this lovely dotty lining. And she also sent me um, some bee mix seed ball. So it is, um, it's clay to protect the seeds, chili powder to deter insects, and compost to give them a head start. And what you do is you scatter them in spring or autumn and it's got bird's foot trefoil, wild marjoram, I'm probably saying all these wrong, sorry, vipers, blue bloss, red clover and foxglove. Um, there's 20 balls each, each containing 50 wildflower seeds. So I'm def we do have an area of our garden which is kind of meadowish at the bottom. So I'm definitely going to go for, for wildflowers in the garden. 
Uh, I'm quite tempted to throw one locally somewhere and see if I can get some wildflowers going. The woodland uh, that we walk through to get to school has been fenced off because the land actually belongs to one of the schools. And more recently, um, as part of the ongoing road improvements, they have updated all of their boundaries. And it means that we can't get into the woodland anymore, which is a shame. We walk through the woodland, but we can't get into the actual woodland. We can only go on the footpath, which in a way makes me sad because we can't go into it. But in another way, it makes me happy that that area is given over to just the wildlife. Um, and we can still see it all. We can see the snowdrops and everything. Um, so I might chuck one in there, get some wildflowers going. And she gave me a lovely uh, little Cath Kids and Hand Cream and this amazing pin, which I've only just remembered about. It's a, gin it's a punky pin, this gingerbread house. How gorgeous is that? I love that. I think I'm going to have to have a bag that's just for Christmas related pins. Oh, that's such a good idea. I'm a genius. And then this is a little pomander. Um, so what you do is you put... This is a smelly stuff. Oh dear. Oh no, that's it. You put your... This is a little pad. And you put your essential oil on the little pad. Whoops. And then you don't drop it. And then you put it back in. And then you slide it in. And then the scent goes into your project. So cute, that's so cute. Uh, and she made me this little um, decoration as well. So it's all living in the bag at the moment that she gave me um, because then I know it's all there. I just love it, I'd forgotten about those seeds. So thank you so much, Sarah. She's a very good gift buyer, unlike me, who I'm pretty sure Oh, and she also sent some bath bombs as well, and there was enough for one each, there was four, one for each of us, but obviously Dan's not getting one, so I'll just have two. <laughs> I'm so kind. Um, so thank you so much, Sarah. You are much better swapper than I am. Um, I also, every time I open this box, I just get this waft, because there is, like, the biggest bit of lavender in there ever. The lady, there was a few of this podcast who sent... A bag for Phoebe's mouse. Now I never, I don't think, showed the finished mouse on the podcast, but I made Phoebe a mouse. I, sh I did show it on Vlogmas. Um, I think it was day one of Vlogmas. I made her a mouse from the Sue Stratford book, Knit Me, Love Me, Dress Me. And I made her some clothes and there was a lady who watched the podcast said, I've got just the thing for that mouse. And she sent a miniature carpet bag. It's the most adorable thing for her to keep her clothes in. And Phoebe loves it, she just can't get over it. But also in that same parcel, she sent um, she sent some chocolate and she sent this fabric. And there's lots of this, look. It's, it's bunnies and flowers and it's just gorgeous. It's this lovely sort of greeny teal colour with yellow and it's beautiful. And there's a lot of this, it's not just like a fat quarter. I think there's a metre of it. But look, it says it's... Love Stone by Fina Brooks for Dashwood Studio. That's the name of the family. So, oh, such a generous thing. But not only did she send me the little bag and the chocolate and the lavender and the fabric, she sent me some yarn. Um, I can't remember if I asked or if it was okay to say your name, but you know who you are. And thank you dearly from the bottom of my heart um, for your generosity and kindness to especially for Phoebe, who was who couldn't believe that you sent her that, um, she was thrilled to bits. Um, she sent me some craft and treat yarn. I've never had any of Catherine's yarn, and this is 85% ethically produced Polworth, 15% nylon. It's the craft and sock base, and the colour is Equinox. So thank you so much. That's it, beautiful. I've been keeping it all in this the box that it came in um, so I can just keep opening it and pretend I've just got it again. So that's my first, uh, second incoming thing. Um, my next incoming thing was a gift. When I went to meet Sharon uh, just before Christmas, Sharon's Crafty Creation, she's got a podcast here on YouTube and she's on Instagram and we live very near to each other. So we met up at Blue Water, which is our local shopping centre and we had a cup of tea. We had two cups of tea and we had some um, cake and she gave me a little gift and I put it under the tree and I opened it on Christmas day. And in it was a bath, um, bubble bath, like one of my favorite ones actually, I don't know how she knew, but from Lush. And it was all in this gorgeous, look at this bag, look at the shape of it. 
I love it. It's like, I feel like it's a bag like I should have on the end of a pole, like in Puss in Boots or something. <laughs> it's just a really, I love it. I'm going to work out how to do this shape. It's really wide. I really like it. Um, you could fit tons in here. You could use it as a sock bag or you could like, you would fit tons in there. It's a lovely cat print fabric, which reminds me of my cat, not my cat, who comes to visit. She's already been in this morning. Um, and in it as well was an Avon Planet Spa Relaxing Lavender and Jasmine Body Souffle, which again, I love a good moisturiser. So I'm looking forward to getting stuck into that. She sent me some Socks Yeah by Coop Knits yarn in this gorgeous colour, which probably isn't going to be done justice because of my decision to sit in a slightly different place and therefore mess with the lighting. The colour is ruby, which is gorgeous. And she sent me, ooh, 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 bonus. I'm gonna eat that in a minute. Um, she made a tag. This is one of her, this is the tag that went with it. And she makes these, she's so clever. This is also Sharon who made the bag as one of the prizes for the um, Cozy Up Winter Mouth. How am I gonna show you these? Will they fit on this pencil? Probably not. Um, right. <laughs> These look like they are made from paper. They are little stitch markers and they look like they are made from rolled up paper. Is that gonna focus? Focus. I am having some phone issues recently. I need a new phone. There we go, well done. So I'm wondering, Sharon, did you make these? She's a very crafty person. It wouldn't surprise me if she did. They're fascinating, I love them. If you did make them, Sharon, will you teach me how to do it? <laughs> We're going to meet up again soon, I hope. So thank you so much, Sharon. That was in so nice of you. Thank you. And again, I can now use all of these things now that I've shown you. Uh, the final thing I wanted to show you has been an incoming thing that I bought ages ago. And I bought this because um, <laughs> I bought it for my sister. And I liked it so much that I bought a, um, one for myself as well. And I thought, well, we can have little sister lead knit along, even though my sister is a much better sock. My sister's been knitting socks for a year and she has, it, basically she is smashing it. She is an expert sock knitter and it puts me to shame. Anyway, I bought her this as part, it was her 40th birthday yesterday. So everybody sing happy birthday to my sister Jenny, who is now 40. My little sister is now 40. So today is the first day of her 41st year. Um, and uh, we've agreed maybe towards the end of February we're going to do a little sister knit along. Anyway, the yarn, the yarn that is incoming is from Craft House Magic. Lovely, lovely Ellie, Craft House Magic. And this colourway is a self striping sock yarn called O. Oh, is it self striping? In my mind, this is a self striping colourway. In reality, maybe it's not. I can't remember. Um, it's called Over the Rainbow, and the little mini scheme that comes with it is uh, called Cloudy Skies. So I bought a set for me and a set for Jenny and we're going to knit up our socks together. And I'm going to double check that it is self-striping because <laughs> that's what I told Jenny it was. There's um, Ellie's card, it's a bit squashed because I've had it saved for so long because I couldn't show it until I'd given her her presents, which I did last weekend. So that is my final, oh no, it's not my final incoming thing. There's two more things. Um, when my mum and I went to festival before Christmas, um, she bought me a skein of yarn, which she then put away uh, to give to me at Christmas. Uh, and you could, it was from Quaint Craft Corner and it's a yarn cake and they held all different ones and you could choose the combination that you wanted. But I chose one of the ready-made ones because I really liked it. It's a lace weight yarn and it's 200 grams, about a thousand meters. And I thought, well, this would be really good for one of the projects where you need to have a sort of gradient yarn and you need loads of it. I quite like the idea of that. And I've got a good book of lace, sort of Shetland lace shawls that it would work really well for. And I really, really like the colours. I love it. Um, I wouldn't say I had a fixed colour palette or anything. I just buy what I like. Um, and sometimes that might be red and black and sometimes it might be yellow and sometimes it might be pastels. Depends how I'm feeling. But it wasn't until the other day I was looking at it and I realised it's 100% acrylic. I don't know why it didn't occur to me to check that when we were at the Yarn Festival because I think, I think 
I mean, it means you can wash it in the machine. Uh, it means it'll be nice and hard wearing, but I haven't been buying it yet. Okay, so several things happened there. <laughs> um, if, if, if anything looks different, um, it's because it's now actually the next day. So you left me halfway to, to, through talking about this yarn. Um, the first thing that happened was my phone ran out of memory. And the second thing that happened was I did not notice my phone had run out of memory and kept talking for probably the next 25 minutes. Uh, at which point I realized it was no longer recording because it had run out of memory. And then had to stop, take everything I had filmed off of uh, my phone um, and by the time I'd done that I ran out of time I had to go pick up uh, Phoebe from school etc so um, it's now Friday I should be at work uh, in fact I was at work this morning when I came home because my cold as you can hear has got got quite a lot worse so um, I in addition to it also being the next day, I am now incredibly snotty, my hair is all over the place. But just to make you feel better, I am wearing the same top <laughs> for continuity. But given that I've just told you it's the next day, that's just blown that out of the water. So apologies if this episode is going to be a bit choppy changey. I had to splice some things together that did survive my phone running out of memory and the rest of it I'm just going to have to re-record. So I was halfway through my incoming things. Oh, I was just about finished with my incoming things. Then I talked about um, my sharing the love section and then I went on to giveaways. I'm just gonna have to re-record and hope that I don't forget anything, my apologies. So I do remember that I was talking about my um, quaint, quaint craft corner yarn cake and I had just been saying that I hadn't realized it was acrylic. Um, and the reason that that slightly uh, bothered me was not, oh, sorry, the light's bad today as well. Um, was because um, it, I haven't been buying acrylic, not through any kind of yarn snobbery at all, but just but because it's plastic and plastic is a big issue, uh, but probably one to save for another day. <laughs> but it is something that concerns me. However, this yarn is beautiful. It will go into something that will be treasured and used for a long time, um, which will hopefully keep it out of landfill for many, 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 many years to come. Um, but I think plastic is a, a conversation for another day. Um, yeah, so that was my yarn cake. Okay, the next thing I wanted to talk about was sharing the love. Now, sharing the love is the section where I always talk about either other podcasters or Instagrammers, designers or yarn dyers um, who I just want to share the love for and like introduce you to. Um, and this time I wanted to do some sharing the love for some new to me designers that I have found over the last few weeks as a result of the conversations that have been happening around racism and inclusivity and representation in the Yarni community. Now, if, you, if you're not entirely sure what I'm talking about, although I think you probably do, there's been a lot of podcasters talking about it. It originated on Instagram. Now, I'm in no way knowledgeable, informed or intelligent enough to do this subject justice but what I did want to say was um, that the conversation that has been happening is hugely important and I have welcomed it greatly um, not least because it has taught me things I didn't realize I didn't know um, and for me personally the conversation has been profoundly life-altering it has made me see things from others point of views and you know I thought I was doing all right I thought I was all right on the big subjects I thought you know I'm a good person I'm trundling through life all right I'm respectful I'm kind to people and now I realize that actually I was coming up severely short in a lot of areas um, and that's not good enough I've already not looked at my notes I'm already going off topic look at your notes I did want to say that on the online areas, on a personal level, and on the online areas that I have responsibility for, my podcast and my Instagram feed and my Ravelry groups, I welcome interaction in, and involvement from you, regardless of your race, your colour, your age, your nationality, your language, your sexuality, your disability, your gender, your size, or any of the myriad of differences that we all have. You will find no discrimination here. There is no room for discrimination of any kind at all. And if I see it in any of the online spaces that I have a responsibility for, then I will remove it. 
If you see anything particularly in my Ravelry group, because I'm woefully bad at Ravelry, that you feel is concerning, please let me know. If you are disrespectful, or you do discriminate for people um, for any of the reasons that I've mentioned, or any of the reasons I may not have even thought of, if you discriminate at all, this probably is not the podcast for you. I have had my listening ears on for this past few weeks and they are staying on and I'm committed to constantly challenging my perceptions and my behaviours when it comes to race. As a very, very small part of this, I'm under no illusions. I am not a big podcast. I'm not a big designer. I'm not a big yonder. I am not uh, knitting royalty. <laughs> I am just me in my kitchen with a cold and a can of Diet Coke rambling to you really badly. But I can do small things and small things can lead to bigger things if we all do them together. I have started to actively follow the diversity hashtag. And this is one of the things over the past few weeks that has massively changed my online life. And actually I've also gone in and started deleting accounts that I follow, that I followed for a long time that um, it either stopped posting or we just no longer have the same kind of interests. Um, and just tried to curate my Instagram feed much better. And one of the things that has been helping is the diversity hashtag, which is why I wanted to talk about this as part of sharing the love. I'm actually going to talk about three uh, new to me designers, <coughs> but I also wanted to mention the diversity hashtag as something that's helped me. There are other hashtags as well that you can follow that will help increase the um, diversity in your feed. Um, and I will try to look some of the ones I've been using up and put them in the show notes underneath. Um, but for me, uh, so in case you didn't know, you can follow a hashtag on Instagram. You can actually go in and uh, choose to follow a hashtag in the same way you would choose to follow a person. And that keeps that hashtag in your feed. And for me, with a diversity hashtag, that keeps, so people using it, um, keeps them in my feed, and it keeps the discussion uh, kind of ongoing in my feed as well, which I feel, if I'm making a commitment to constantly challenging myself about this, I think that is important. The, the way that uh, Nathan Taylor, who started the uh, diversity hashtag uh, last... So Nathan T Taylor, who's the sockmetician, he started the diversity hashtag last summer. I remember him doing it and I remember thinking, oh, that's nice. And then I just moved on. Didn't do anything about it. Do you see what I mean? Um, that's not good enough, is it? So I went back to it after the conversation started. And I started to follow it. And I want to read to you the description that Nathan Taylor gave to the use of the diversity hashtag. Okay, so this is in the words of the Socratician. It was set up to represent different groups and communities on our feeds. Let's not be part of the echo chamber problem. Let's learn from wider resources than our own circles. And that's exactly what it does. Um, I have been discovering so many um, new Instagrammers, new dyers, new designers, just new fabulous human beings through that hashtag that were not in my feed before purely because of the echo chamber issue. My echo chamber was not offering me a diverse section of people. Um, I have to go and look for that and I have to use resources like that kind of hashtag to go and do that and oh my goodness the difference it has made to my feed and to me as a person it has literally almost immediately um, been massive. Um, like I say, small things. I am a small voice. I am not an eloquent voice. I don't talk well on big subjects, but I can ramble about yarn related things. So there is no reason why I can't use that superpower <laughs> to help with the bigger issues as well. Um, I want to use my sharing the love section more often to celebrate um, a more diverse group of makers, dyers, designers, podcasters, Instagrammers. Have I said Instagrammers already? Just the 
myriad of people that are out there that I have started to now discover now that I have crept out of my echo chamber. Um, and there are many, many, many that I have discovered and want to share, but I have narrowed it down to three and it was really hard. And um, it's small. It's a small thing to do, it's tiny, but it's something I can do, so I will. And I have many, many more people that I want to talk about. As I always do, I share in the love section. Um, I have got um, many, many episodes ahead of me <laughs> um, in order to continue to um, share people that I am discovering, thanks to the um, increased diversity in my feed. Okay. Stop rambling and start talking about people. Okay, the first person I would like to uh, share the love for is Shay Johnson, and her Instagram name is Knit and Crochet. <coughs> and I love that because obviously it means that crochet is spelt phonetically, but it's also um, a play on her name, Shay. It's the little things that I appreciate. Um, she has a few designs on Ravelry, maybe three or four, so not many. Um, and she is the designer of the As If Tea. Now, when I saw this on Instagram, it kind of blew my mind a little bit because I've never seen anything like it. Um, it's It uses uh, mohair to create... Um, up, do you know, I'm going to put a picture up. Where would be a good place? If I'm, right, so if I move over here, because I'm going to be putting pictures up, so I'm going to move over so that I've got space to put pictures. So I'm gonna put a picture up uh, of the As If Tea, and you can see it's um, an Aran Waite um, uh, top, sweater, T-shirt. It's called the As If Tea, so let's go with T-shirt. Um, and it uses mohair to create the see-through uh, section, and then it's a very cropped top. And I love this, and at f when I first saw it, I got really excited, because I thought maybe I could use my yarn that I got in Denmark because I got one skein of just um, uh, speckled yarn and one of mohair but actually because it's an Aran weight I, I can't do that and I probably wouldn't have had enough anyway even if it had been a green weight setter but um, and as you know I'm not buying yarn until Fibre East so <laughs> I can't do anything about it until I start buying yarn again <coughs> but I might start and a bit of dig about in my stash to see if I've got anything that could make up the uh, solid um, part of the top. So then all I need to find is a matching or contrasting um, mohair. But it is such an interesting design and I've never seen anything like that before. I absolutely fell in love with it. Um, so I would highly recommend going to have a look at that. And if you make it, let me know because I can look on enviously and then like steal any tips that you might have as you do it. I still haven't knitted a garment. Uh, yeah, so definitely check out Shay um, of Knit and Crochet. Her feed is lovely, her designs are lovely. Um, uh, yeah, so go and sh uh, show her some love. And the next one that I wanted to share is Mama's Teddy Bear. Oh my goodness. Right, so, I, so Mama's Teddy Bear, her name is, and I hope I'm going to pronounce this correctly. I went on to Google to get a pronunciation, so I hope I'm going to say this correctly, but her name is Ina. Um, she is a knitting designer and, and uh, she has got a stunning feed. Her designs are right up my street. I can see her making, uh, I can see her making, I can see me making many of her designs. They are lovely. But my favourite pattern that I've, I, I'm going to buy it and I'm going to, I've got yarn in mind actually, I'm definitely going to buy it and start making it this weekend, is the Raspberry Jam Beret, which is, I love a beret. Uh, and I'm going to put a picture of uh, that up now. Yeah, so this is a raspberry jam beret. It's a textured hat made in worsted weight. Wor wor worsted? <laughs> I always say worsted, but maybe it's worsted. Anyway, worsted weight. It is a gorgeous uh, beret pattern. I love a beret um, and I can't wait to get stuck into making it. It's a really nice texture and she's also on her... Um, Ravelry Designs got the most lovely sort of colour work um, ear flap hat that goes from baby size all the way up to large adult or adult size so you can make matching ones for the whole family. Can you imagine? 
my almost 13 year old would not thank me for that but I'm pretty sure my eight year old would like it but they are lovely such lovely designs and I'm going to put some pictures up of those as well they're called the big nomad little nomad hats um, and I absolutely love them and I've not really made a good try of colour work I've had a little play with it but not really done anything major and it's designs like that that just make me really want to you know, give it a, find the time and come out of my comfort zone and give it a go. Um, yeah, absolutely beautiful patterns. I'd definitely go and check out Ina, Mama's teddy bear. Um, okay, and then via Ina, so I was looking at her feed and just like trawling through and being really stalkerish and sort of liking everything. And she was wearing a jumper. She was, there's a picture of her with one of her gorgeous children and she's wearing this sort of yellow and grey jumper. And I asked her about it. I was like, ah, I love your jumper. And it wasn't one of her designs. But she gave me the name of the designer and the name of the pattern. So I went and had a look. And that led me on to someone else. And you're probably going to laugh at me because I'm pretty sure that everyone's probably already heard of her. <laughs> but I hadn't. And that is um, Aurora Knits. Um, and she is known as Frenchie. And oh my goodness. She's amazing. She is, she lives in Japan. She's part Maori, I think, and she has got the most inspiring website. You can go and do a quiz where it will tell you what kind of sort of knitter crafter that you are. And if you're going to go and do it, I'll put a link to the quiz below. If you're going to go and do it, I am the mystic. And you get this sheet that explains to you like all about you. And I was reading it like that really does actually sound like me that is me I am the mystic and then based on what kind of craft you are it gives you recommended types of patterns that would be good for your making style and then you're like stuck there going I would like to make that I would and then you're just like favorite and you just fall deeper and deeper into this rabbit hole of wanting to make stuff um yeah so she, so that was another person that I found and wanted to share with you. So that's my three that I've narrowed it down to. And I'm looking at the fourth one. Think, no, no, no. I'm going to save that for next time. And I wouldn't have found, or maybe I would have done, but I don't think I would have found any of these three amazing designers uh, had the last few weeks and the conversation that has happened, happened. Um, I'm going to continue to share uh, the new to me designers that I have found over the past few weeks and will continue to find as my feed grows um, and changes um, over time. Um, I hope I made a good go of that. I realise that I am not the best of speakers on big things, but I hope my I hope I gave the topic the seriousness it deserves, and I hope that um, the meaning of what I'm trying to say is coming across. Okay, there's only one thing left and that is giveaways. So let's move on and try to race through that really quickly because I'm sure I have probably been talking for far too long. So there was a giveaway last time. I have now closed the thread. It was for three lovely patterns. And because my notes are now all over the place, I haven't got them written down. Uh, but from memory, the three patterns were the candy cane socks, uh, a knitted pattern from lovely Ellie of Craft House Magic, the um, Trelawney shawl, a lovely crochet triangular shawl pattern from Milabo, and the Lund mittens, which was a knitted mitten pattern by Hannah of Rosehip Island. Rosehip Island is her yarn dyeing company. Rosehip Knits is her podcast. I think I've got the right. Um, and I've now closed that um, thread and I drew the winners uh, the, yesterday morning using our little friend Alexa. And um, it drew out three random numbers. So the first random number to come out was number 47, who is Nuts for Knits, Danell. Um, and I should say as well that the prompt for this thread was, have you made any resolutions? And if you have, what were they? So I'll very quickly tell you what everyone says. So Danelle's uh, resolution was to periodically fast from YouTube, Instagram and Facebook so she can read more books, which sounds very sensible indeed. And um, is very kind of similar to my kind of simplifying uh, plan for this year to try and just, you know, um, reduce my online addiction <laughs> and read more books and connect more with nature. Um, 
The next number that came out was number 37, and that is Rose Cottage 2, and that is Julie. And Julie, you made a note that you would like the shawl or the mittens pattern. Uh, so I, I, I took note of that because you've already got the candy cane socks pattern. Um, and your um, resolution was to lose weight and learn colour work. Also, very good resolutions and ones that I could probably do with doing myself. Um, and the final one was number 16, Knitting Charlie who is Elaine, who for some reason I recognise. Have you won something before, Elaine? I can't remember. Uh, and your resolution was to be kind to yourself, which is lovely. And I think we can all learn to not only be kind to ourselves, but to be kind to others. Sorry, I sounded like a presenter of The One Show or something. <laughs> I do apologise. That was uh, Elaine's um, resolution. So I will get in touch with each of you. So nobody else put a preference for anything. It was only Julie that said that she already had the socks pattern. So I will divide the patterns out amongst you and contact the designers and get them sent on to you. So congratulations. Thank you to everybody that entered and put down your resolutions. It was really fun to read through them all. Time for a new giveaway. In fact, two new giveaways. I've just remembered. So I've got some patterns to give away. So first of all, I've got a lovely new pattern from Jen Sheelan. Uh, she sent me her latest pattern, which is called Rustic Elegance. I'm gonna put a picture of that up on the screen now. It's a really nice textured pattern. It's really interesting, actually. I really like it. And she gave me a copy and she's given a copy to give away. So um, I'm going to go and open a thread for that one. I'm also gonna open a thread for uh, two sock patterns that's been sent to me from Naomi, hi Naomi, um, of Cozy Cute Knits. Now, uh, Naomi has, and Jen have both uh, donated lots of patterns to this podcast, so thank you so much to both of you for being so generous. And um, Naomi's actually uh, started a sock collection, they're all Harry Potter um, inspired socks, and I think it's a collection of seven different patterns and two of the patterns in the in that collection are the swish and flick socks on the screen now and also the what lies within socks and she's given me a copy each of those patterns to give away so i will also open a thread for those i will put the prompts for uh, that in the uh, in the threads so if you go along to the Ravelry group then um, the threads will be linked below and go and see if you can uh, try luck at winning those patterns which are all really lovely so thank you very much for donating those and good luck to everybody I have 5,000 viewers I have over 5,000 viewers now and I can't get my tiny little brain around that um, thank you from the bottom of my heart to everyone that subscribes I'm not sure why you do <laughs> um, but I'm incredibly grateful. I don't know going forward where I want the podcast to go um, or what I want to do with it or I've never really had a regular podcasting schedule or anything like that but I'm incredibly grateful that you want to come and join me to talk about yarny things and uh, yeah I know numbers don't mean anything other than to scare the living daylights out of me um, but they are a good excuse to give something away, aren't they? So I thought we'd do a little 5,000 subscriber giveaway. So you saw this earlier. I'm gonna give away one of my dodgy bags. This isn't actually finished because it needs a drawstring and I need to sew the lining up. Um, but I'm gonna give away this one uh, just because I really like this fabric. Um, I really like the yoga fabric and um, I remembered to put the tag on it and I like the blue lining. Um, uh, oh, I have sewed it up. Look at that. So it's all ready to go. All I need to do is put the drawstring on and I will put with it one of my uh, little drops of wonderful pins as well. If you've already, so if you've already got one, you'll have two or you, or you can nominate, if you've already got one and you don't want two, you could nominate someone else and I'll send them the pin. How about that? Okay. So it'll be a pin with that. And then I've got some yarn that was given to me ages ago um, for a giveaway by lovely Nikki at Little Stone Cottage Yarns. Uh, and there's her details there. It's absolutely gorgeous, bright, happy, springy colour. Um, it is called Daisy Toes. Really beautifully saturated colours. Really vibrant. And I've been saving this um, for a special giveaway. So I'm really happy to pop that with the um, yoga bag and a pin. And that is going to be the 5,000 subscriber giveaway. Um, yeah, and I showed you. Yeah, so Nikki... There is Little Stone Cottage Yarn. She's the whip queen on Instagram. So if you hop along to my Ravelry group, I'll start a 5,000 um, subscriber giveaway thread and the prompt will be, 
tell me about a book that has changed your life. It can be a fiction book, a factual book, it can be any type of book. Uh, one that had, do you know, a book that has stayed with you and altered you. Tell me about it in the 5,000 subscriber giveaway thread and I will draw a winner in the next podcast. I'm going to shut up now because I've been talking basically for two days. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, only nanoseconds will have passed in your time. It's a little bit like I'm in Narnia and you're in the outside world, or is it the other way around? Anyway, no time has passed for you, whereas hours have passed for me. Thank you very much for joining me and thank you very much to listening to my, um, my rambles. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. You will see me again a lot sooner than you think, I'm just saying. I'm just leaving that out there as something to ponder. Something might pop up a bit sooner than you think. I will be back with a normal podcast in a few weeks' time. Be kind, happy crafting, and see you next time. Bye.